Ministry of Employment and Skills, Portfolio, hold this meeting at the end of November. I have to say it's a really good meeting, it was well attended, and we were advised at that meeting of the six priorities that Mayor Anderson will have for the city region. Um, I, I think these would probably be um, on my list of six as well. I think it's a very good list. I think it's something we can all work together on, especially things like collective work on support for schools. <coughs> as you're probably aware, the city region doesn't have responsibility for education, but I think everybody understands across the city region, education is fundamental to uh, outcomes and work opportunities ultimately. So more work in there is very, very good and welcome. Over the page, um, I had a great afternoon here just before Christmas uh, with the Lord Mayor and some of our young people who have been on a very mouthy uh, name, but I don't want to just use the acronym, uh, the SF ILMs course uh, for the seven young people. Uh, eight young people attended with their families and it, it was really fascinating to listen to their experiences, the challenges they had to overcome, and also equally fascinating to hear them question the Lord Mayor about their role. And here we go, it was a lovely, lovely event, and great news is the eight of them have employment. Um, Merseyside Adventure Center was just an update. Um, this is a course that's been developed as an alternative and I've arranged for the volunteers to now attend uh, LASH at the start of February to advise their teachers of the existence of the course and the type of things they'll be doing on that. I was really pleased to attend Park Road at Doors Learning Centre. Um, it's the first one I've been to and um, to be quite frank I'm surprised at how well used it is. Um, there were lots and lots of courses going on and they were all really packed, to say the least. And talking to um, the learners, it was interesting. They were all committed to actually doing more, uh, getting qualifications, trying to go on to get a better job. And it was, it was really very, very heartwarming to hear their stories. Uh, I also attended uh, an adult then so there was this governor's meeting just, I think, in, at the end of October, just after the last select, and the next one will be in January. And that's my opportunity to actually track and keep an eye on outcomes, but generally our learning services, adult learning services are doing very, very well. They're doing a great job. Um, Liverpool Ways to Work is a good news story, and I think we've had extended funding on this, Elaine which is fantastic and it will now run until June 2021. The Schools of North conversation was held here in the Town Hall and focused on apprenticeships. And the reason I mention it there again is because I've been talking, if you look at the paragraph below, to LFC Foundation about setting up a course. I'm really concerned about the lack of spend of the apprenticeship levy and we've been looking at um, what we could possibly do uh, and this is quite a small project but Liverpool Foundation are going to work with us on it. I've managed to get I think it's 100k funding from the Council of Education to provide some wages uh, for young trainees to train as youth workers because there is actually a gap in the city uh, given the cuts that have generally decimated our youth services and we've had the only youth workers now operating in the city as part of the council. We see that as a skills gap and the intention here is to train up two teams, one from the north and the south of the city, but to be very high quality and to give them a much broader uh, set of training, if you like, than you would normally have for youth work. So we would expect them to be able to deliver careers advice, uh, mental health and physical health support, um, signposting the services, that sort of thing, as well as the usual work of youth workers. 
Um, so that one is early days. We've had a couple of meetings, so the funding is in place, and the programme will be developed, and I'll report back on that again once we, it starts to take shape. Um, I also attended um, the Enterprise Hub launch, which was the second phase over at the Women's Organisation. It is what it says. It's very successful. Another good news story. And what's happening with phase two is that they understand that you know you set up a business, you have some success, but you can't just pull the carpet away from under new businesses that quickly. It's just a little bit more of that support to ensure that they are really properly embedded and they will be successful. Um, I had a meeting with uh, Councillor Toulon about Business Growth Hub, um, and I'm just getting my head around the function of that. And I will be meeting with her and Janice Mears uh, next week to discuss that more, and I will report back further on that next time. Uh, Hackathon at Central Library was absolutely fabulous. I don't know how many of you are aware of Marianne Jenny, um, but she spoke at the Rise Dinner. St George's Hall in April and she is an extraordinary woman and she has a personal aim to, to ensure a million young women or women, you don't have to be young, women learn to code by 2030 and it, it's very interesting when you look at um, your unexpected nature of skills that are required now and I don't think Robert Mind ever mentioned this, he mentioned Working, Kent's working at Unilever to me, um, who also needed to be able to code uh, chemists because they need to be able to tweak their own programs if you like. Coding is crucial going forward, and unfortunately, it's not that popular in schools. Um, so, we need to find fresh ways of getting young people to engage with this. This is an absolute essential skill going forward. And Marianne was due to come back to the city, I think, possibly this month, but quite early in the year, to do more work with us. And I welcome that. Chatham House was a workshop at FACT, and a couple of people from the Mayor's Office attended and said it was really good. Um, the Year of Reading is very important. It's something the Mayor is absolutely fixed on. Um, and I would like to be able to measure something that comes out of it. So we are working around a proper timeline, if you like, of events, which will actually turn into a directory in future years that people can use. We're going to have um, a website set up beneath the Central Library on the Council uh, site, which will have all those resources there, all that information. Because the thing that seems to me is so much work is going on, but it's going on in silos, and people are not all aware of everything. I, I certainly am not aware of everything. And when I talk to people, they would welcome having that information so they know what's there. From our point of view, as you all know, there's no money. Um, so everything we have to do, we have to do uh, with, with no budget. And so we're doing things like we want to use social media to highlight and really raise the profile of good work that's taking place in the city. And I'll just draw your attention to that hashtag there, Liverpool Reads, if we can use that as much as possible when we're tweeting and doing things. And also watch out for other things. All members are invited to the launch, which it will be, I think, June 21st of January in the Central Library. Uh, Changing Horizons event we just mentioned is actually in the town hall. Uh, and business and governance in schools. I am literally meeting with some businesses and schools, I think at the start of February, because we're also trying to cement those relationships. Uh, Drew Shoots done some excellent work for us in making these connections. And she's also trying to layer that with um, the work around reading. So lots of additionality coming through. Um, I've listed here meetings, uh, not everything I've attended, but I'll just try to give you a flavour of some of the stuff I do on the education side as well, which might be of interest. Um, I have to take 
questions, Chair? I actually think it's uh, general facility improvements, the rest. It says just slightly above there. Uh, um, they're also spending money on low carbon technology and improvements to facilities. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, the other question is in item 3 on the same page, towards the bottom. Tackle specific gaps in the regenerating the region's economy. 13,000 vacancies in the NHS in the region. Is that the Merseyside region or the Northwest region? Yeah, it's the Liverpool City region. Yeah. It's massive. actually got a plan at the minute. I think um, the way the governance works, um, vacancies arise and it would be a case of allocation according to space and vacancy. Um, I would say generally all the schools would probably benefit from this kind of association with um, business and what we'd be more particularly looking at would be the skills because all schools are required to do a skills gap. Um, I'll set a question very closely to the boards about this. And so it's about matching that rather than, you know, where you place geographically. And it would be that kind of approach. Anyway, 
the point with the apprenticeship levy, which is why there's such a massive understanding right across the board, not just the council, is it doesn't pay wages. This is different in that we found some funding to pay some wages so we can then pull down the levy for the training. For anybody else, if they're already employed, just talk to us and we'll help you get that down because we have that expertise in the council. Yeah, and I think, like you, I think, why not have more training? What we don't want is the money being siphoned off to managers who are going to do degrees when it was meant really for helping young people.
strong page town on the enterprise hub. Um, Barbara, thanks for the update on that. I've had experience away from the women's organisation. Um, my only, um, just one of the issues I've got is, um, if you're not aware of that, how you would find out about that support, because that support's available to all businesses, startups across the city region, um, and that links into the growth hub. So if a business rings up for a startup, um, they can get this free support. So I just wonder if it's worth um, maybe just getting the link to this business support enterprise hub and sending it out to the, to the group so they're aware of it. I would have thought that's already happening because even before I was on this select, I was aware of it and I've actually attended some of their courses myself. Um, I don't know. I would have thought it would be marketed fully. It's um, of course city region and you were as well. It's not piece. It's not an out of detailed, uh, detailed familiarity with, but I'm sure we can put together a note um, for committee members to explain uh, how the communication uh, is worked and the marketing is worked through. Yeah, I mean, uh, there are, I, I used to be, sorry, I used to be a growth hub advisor myself, so I know there are leaflets, but there's no marketing campaign, or I don't think there has been, has there, to, to actually target that, so we could just get that note and send it out. Yeah. Actually, I think um, this is actually promoted on the local city website as well. Is it the Pool Express? Um, you know, so I think there has been publicity around it. Um, I'm just I'm not sure of the detail of the publicity around it.
land-based jobs around maritime, which I, I wasn't aware of. There's so much opportunity for careers. This will be delivered in two ways, I imagine, and I've spoken, we've met with youth services as well about this, is I find schools or by referrals from youth services. So maybe they come across young people who <coughs> need some support and need a different type of curriculum. We also have, as you probably know, with some reporting on it before, something called Leap Up in Parkland's Clinic, which is an alternative curriculum. It is vocational. Um, it will be delivered some parts on land, some on a boat logged, uh, what, what is it called again? Anchored? Anchored? And some out at sea. It is meant to be an alternative um, curriculum, but it would run alongside, I think we'd also want to be doing English maths and those basics as well. Um, the, the funding, and this is why I've arranged for them to meet LASH. LASH is the Association of Local Head Teachers, so they're talking directly to the schools. The schools will know their pupils who need this kind of curriculum, and I'll ask them to work out a unit cost. So we would want to know initially and immediately how much for any young person to do this course, and then the schools can work that out. We're also in the background looking at possibly getting businesses to sponsor places as well. So when referrals say them through youth services, we can actually pay for those as well. So there's a lot going on behind all of that completely. Does that answer all your questions? Um, just a small one. Um, do you know if anything comes to plans reality foundation to know when we'd be able to use the I understand that I'm going to say no uh, because I think working on such a programme will take a few Ideally, I'd like to see it sort of around the summer. The money's in place, so, you know, good. Thank you. I just want to start off by saying thank you, Barbara, because you certainly started with this decade with the energy and the busy agenda that we expect the cabinet to have, so, so thanks for that. Um, and I was, I was going to raise the Liverpool ways to work. <coughs> As well, and I welcome what Councillor Shaw's all said around us. Want to see more well, because the reports I've seen about the Liverpool Ways to Work only shine positive lights on it. You know, we've seen all targets that's helped you know, as many people as it can, and, and, and that's a brilliant thing. And I'm glad that the European Social Funds are continuing the work and that we can continue to help people in the Liverpool city region. So, so that's good news. And so, to ask a quick question on um, Liverpool. Year of reading and see if there's a buy in at all because you know, as a council, I think it'd be a great investment for, for young people across the I'm sure the council across the city would, would think the same. So, is there any buy in that we can, you know, throughout local pots come, come forward and, and, and buy into the, the, the service at all? Yes. <laughs> um, there'll be lots of opportunities um, for that kind of arrangement. Um, we're also working with businesses and we've, we've currently got some sponsorship. So, for example, um, the lead governor at Alder Hay, uh, Council of Governors, has put up the funding for the first competition, if you like, the prizes for that. Uh, Wilmot Dixon have just sponsored the lunch for the event. Um, what we're trying not to do is ask for money in the first instance, but my own view is things like the Dolly Parton Foundation work that Councillor Oberlin used to do, Rachel Oberlin. Um, we had it in my ward, but when she stood down, we stopped doing that. Things like that, I think we can regenerate and get up again. Um, the other things, though, I would draw attention to is there is some really good stuff which costs absolutely nothing. So, for example, the big little library up in Gattaca is run by a member staff from Gattaca Com. Um, in the Bellevale shopping precinct there, and they literally give away books. Uh, but they are dependent on people making contributions, etc. So, more about this, I think, the main drive will be for us to get that information into one place where people can access it. 
Um, and, you know, we will always work with councillors to spend their money wisely on educational stuff. And I will mention something completely different here. I did send an email last week about the Not All Champions in schools. For 250 you can put your schools if you're a governor or just a councillor. Uh, and if they're in your ward, you can put them into this competition for £500. You can have an artist working in that school alongside them. There's many ways to read. You can read art as well as words. So there you go. There's 500 quid we'll have for each school, please. Just, just a brief um, where we're still used, it, we're still the Dolly Parton scheme, which has been really successful. Um, but just on something else um, that Councillor Shortall mentioned, um, I, I would be interested in getting more um, people from the business community on our advisory um, panel. I know we've, we've mentioned this, Barbara. Uh, I think you mentioned something from the charity sector that you had in mind maybe to, to be part of the panel. Somebody from the charity sector who could be on the advisory panel. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I don't know who would organise that show. It wouldn't be me, but I think it's a great idea. It is a great idea, and there's a, a, a standing request that if any um, committee members have any suggestions. Please let me know outside of the confines of this meeting by email and if it's appropriate and if they accept. And if they turn up, then they can be advisory members of this committee. Mm -hmm. um, over the last year, we've had a number of suggestions and at least two of them have been accepted as advisory members of this committee. Sadly, one of them has never accepted an invitation to attend, but that's no reflection of
that's really helpful. Um, and I'd love to, to take you up on the offer, but unfortunately, I, you know, I, I've got a job as well. I'm just wondering, is it possible um, for you to get some, maybe even video clips of the activities that you do? And, you know, I, I, I found it really interesting when you brought some people along last time, but I appreciate not every person can do that. So when I worked at Nosey Housing Trust, what we used to do is do video clips, and that gave kind of uh, the trustees a taste of the work we did. Thank you. 